Hey guys, Reed here. Today I want to expand upon the video I did last week where I previously showed you how to create a month to date, quarter to date, and year to date slicer for your report. I now want to show you how to use the use relationships function with an inactive relationship to enable this time intelligence logic only for a selected set of measures, allowing for easy date filtering for some calculations, but leaving others unfiltered. This also means that your bidirectional relationships can be more secure in certain models, since you're only activating that relationship when you explicitly call upon it using the use relationship function within a single measure. So let's hop into Power BI and get started. So you'll recognize this report from the other week, albeit with a few changes that I've done. So you'll notice here now that I kind of have a grouped section of visuals here on the page. I have my slicer, there's that date range card again, and I also just have an extra card up into here. And the goal of these is the fact that I only want these three visuals to be affected by the time intelligence slicer. So if I select month to date, quarter to date, and year to date, notice they are being filtered and this is being unfiltered. And the way I accomplished this was using an inactive relationship and the use relationships function. Now I will play devil's advocate and say that it is possible to turn on and off relationships by coming up to the modeling tab, selecting manage relationships and doing that from there. But that's a very manual process and I don't want to have to do that on every single report page. What I'd rather do, like I said, is in my model, I would rather completely turn this relationship off, meaning that data neither goes towards or from that time intelligence table unless I call upon it within a measure using the use relationships function. So that means that for the entire model, this is completely deactivated until I call upon it. And if we come back to my report page here, we can actually see that I've done that on a few calculations over here. So I've actually have a subfolder grouped in here within my DAX measures folder. Now, if you're actually curious how I created this subfolder here, I will link you to a video where I talk about how to create folders and subfolders within a DAX measure folder over here on the right. But for this, what I wanna just show you is the code that I've used for this. Now, in general, for my models, when I create time intelligence functions, I brand them as TI for this case, short for time intelligence. You can use whatever vernacular works well for you or your organization, but this just allows me to label it. And all I'm doing is I'm calculating the original calculation here, the average admission rate in this case for the main visual here on this page. And then I'm using the user relationship function and that just asks for the two columns in an inactive relationship, which then turns it on for this specific measure. So that first part here is the date column from that time intelligence slicer table and then the date column that it is attached to in the calendar table. So now for this single measure, it is now using that. That is how I'm able to get the month to date, quarter to date, and year to date working in here, because this visual right here, as you can see, is using the time intelligence ones. If I was to actually go back, just to show you as an example, I will put admission rate in here, the regular tuition in here, and I'm swapping them out for the normal versions that don't have that user relationship applied. And as you can see, it no longer works with that. So it does require the use of that user relationship function. That means that now as the developer, you have complete control over what calculations do or don't use that. And in general, it keeps it more secure with the model, especially when you have bi-directional relationships. And both methods have their pros and cons, meaning either having this relationship turned on, like I showed in the first video, or turning it off and explicitly calling it with the use relationship function within the actual measure itself that I show in this video. And it really depends on the model shape and the number of times your users will end up calling upon this. If 100% of your report requires the time intelligence slicer to work with every visual, I will say go ahead and just leave that relationship turned on and you don't have to worry about the measures. If you have a mixture of the two where you want some visuals that do and some visuals that don't get filtered by this time intelligence slicer, then go ahead and use the practice that I've done in here. But I just wanted to provide you the options of both ways just so you can see some of the different options you can go ahead and apply. And that about covers it for this video. If you like this video, please click or smash that like button below. And if you have any comments for this video or have a suggestion for a future video, please add that to the comments section down below. And if this is your first time on my channel or you wanna see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video.